Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. This is Killer Bites, the show where we cover some pretty wild true crime cases. Today I'm covering the topic of Rock Theriot and his cult, the Ant Hill Kids. Warning, this story involves many brutal descriptions of torture, so please be prepared to hear some not nice things. On May 16th, 1947, Rock Theriot was born in Saguenay, Quebec, Canada. Rock's family was enormous. He was the second oldest out of eight kids. Rock was described as an outgoing, intelligent kid. Despite this, he dropped out of school in seventh grade. Once Rock dropped out, he started to study the Old Testament in the Bible and became obsessed with the battle between good and evil. He was fully convinced that an apocalypse was on its way and the world was coming to an end. Rock thrived in large group settings and wanted to take charge whenever possible. He was outgoing and charming and people gravitated toward that energy. At 21, Rock married a 17-year-old girl named Francine and they had two children together. He supported them by selling wood carvings he created. Rock's health started taking a turn for the worse. He started complaining of extreme abdominal pain and was eventually diagnosed with stomach ulcers. Rock underwent multiple surgeries to fix his stomach issues, but the surgeries ended up causing him more pain. In addition to the ulcers, he dealt with rapid gastric emptying, which is better known as dumping syndrome. With all of his medical complications, Rock hated doctors and doubted the medical field. They were supposed to cure him and ultimately made his pain 10 times worse. After the multiple failed surgeries and debilitating pain, the only things that brought him any pain relief were substances and alcohol. His finances crumbled, he became angry and violent, and he cheated on Francine. They'd been married for seven years, but she decided enough was enough and the two divorced. Rock and the woman he cheated on Francine with, Giselle, ended up tying the knot. After this, things started to change for Rock. He started reading up on medical journals and went from drinking like a monster and having a very unhealthy lifestyle to preaching to everyone he knew about his medical discoveries and decided he wanted to make a lifestyle change. He stopped drinking and using substances, started eating healthy foods, and began caring for his overall health. While Rock made these changes in his life, he wanted to surround himself with others who felt similarly. He left Catholicism and joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Their whole thing was living a healthy lifestyle and getting rid of tobacco and processed food. Rock really honed in on their holistic approach to everything. He was practically a rock star in the church, getting more and more people to come to services. Everyone was so pleased with Rock's enthusiasm that they let him give out sermons during services. The attention got to his head, and at one point he told anyone who would listen that God had spoken to him through a vision. The end of the world was near, and Roe could use his powers and his newly appointed position of God's messenger to heal the sick. He told these stories to everyone, and somehow there were people who genuinely believed him despite never having witnessed it for themselves. However, others in the church were furious that Roe was spreading these lies and trying to gain leadership. So the other church leaders kicked him out, and rightfully so. This was not a deterrent for Rock, though. Through his time at Seventh-day Adventist, he had gained a little bit of a following as the self-identified people savior. He convinced people to leave their lives, quit their jobs, pull their kids out of school, and follow him to new heights. And to make matters worse, Rock prohibited any of his followers from contacting their loved ones in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Instead, he told them to listen to his sermons and motivational speeches. He was their new family. Only then would they be free of sin. So, Rock and 13 men and women traveled to the middle of nowhere, Eternal Mountain, to start a commune. He declared the end of the world was coming in February of 1979 because God had spoken to him and gave him that cute little tidbit of info. The only way they could survive was if they remained in a remote location and built their commune from scratch. You know when you're working on a group project and one guy does nothing but boss everybody around? Yeah, that was Rock. While his followers were chopping down trees, building log cabins, and foraging for food, Rock sat back and observed. He made everyone wear the exact same clothes to promote equality and devotion to the group. He rationed their food and restricted nourishment if anyone ever complained. While sitting on his lazy ass, eating as much food as he wanted, and drinking alcohol, even though he preached that his followers were banned from consuming it, Rock looked at his followers and compared them to a colony of ants. And the Ant Hill Kids were born. Rock decided to rename everyone in the commune to biblical names, starting with himself. He believed that he was the reincarnation of Moses and demanded that everyone treat him as such. 
And what do you do when you're an abusive misogynist? Well, you marry as many women as you want, of course. So Rock married and impregnated every single woman in the cult. He wanted to expand the group and keep the members devoted to him. And then, wouldn't you know it, February 1979 rolled around and the world didn't come to an end. The group started to raise their eyebrows at Rock. Maybe he didn't know as much as he said he did. This speculation was quickly squashed because Rock said God and Earth did not run at the same time. Most accepted the miscalculation and moved on, but some slowly realized that something was not right. By the 80s, the Ant Hill Kids had over 40 members. Rock had impregnated nine of his female followers and produced over 20 children. At this point, he had complete and utter control of the adults, and now he was the father to countless children. He continued abusing his power, but now it was on an even more heinous level. Members were not allowed to speak to one another unless in the presence of Rock. They also needed to ask his permission if they wanted to engage in intimate acts with one another. Rock would spy on the members, and if he caught them doing something he disapproved of, he'd explain that God had alerted him of their actions. If Rock thought there were doubters or followers who wanted to leave the commune, their punishment would be physical pain. Sadly, the children endured horrible physical, emotional, and sexual abuse from Rock as well. Despite all of the terror the members of the Ant Hill Kids were facing, Rock would occasionally be mentioned in the newspaper. Reports deemed him a gentle mountain man, but as we know, he was anything but. One man named Guy Veer saw these articles and decided he wanted to join the group. He traveled out into the wilderness, found the group, and was assigned babysitting duty. However, he could only care for the children who were not biologically Rock's. In 1981, a two-year-old child named Samuel was Rock's next target. Samuel was having difficulty urinating, no doubt from the physical harm he had received at the commune, and Rock believed that he was a doctor and could cure him of the problem. He poured rubbing alcohol down Samuel's throat as an anesthetic and took a pair of scissors to the little boy's private area in a botched operation. Tragically, Samuel did not survive because his injuries were so severe. Rock forced his followers to burn the body to dispose of it. Rock, being the absolutely horrifying human he is, took no accountability for executing this young child. Apparently, Guy had suffered from headaches before the incident, and Rock convinced him that the best way to cure his headaches was, in fact, castration. Guy signed a consent form giving Rock permission to carry out another botched operation. Surprisingly, he survived but he knew that he needed to escape. Immediately, Guy found the authorities and told them everything about Roque, the commune, and the murder of Samuel. The authorities traveled out to the commune where they found Samuel's charred body. Rock and eight other members who were responsible for the crime were arrested and thrown in prison. Social services were called out and they removed 17 children from the commune. Rock was charged with criminal negligence causing bodily harm, but only ended up serving 14 months in prison. Only 14 months! After his release, he was back and ready to continue his torture. Following the release of Rock and some of the other arrested members, the commune moved from Eternal Mountain to Burnt River, Ontario in 1984. He conducted gladiator tournaments where he forced members to strip down and climb into a dirt pit to fight for his pleasure. Once again, the commune sank into tragedy as there was yet another passing of a child. This time, it was one of Rock's biological children. However, he believed this child was from the devil. One of Rock's wives decided to leave it outside in a wheelbarrow in the middle of the winter to escape a life living with Rock. I mean, this is Canadian winter and the child froze to death. This death was immediately investigated by the authorities who already had Rock and his followers on their list. And in 1987, child services once again came to the commune and removed 14 children. There were only adults left in the commune, two men and eight women from this point on. After all the children had been removed, Rock became even more violent. He believed he was a doctor and continued with his surgeries on the people who were left. Giselle, Rock's second wife, attempted to flee the commune but was unsuccessful. Rock threw a hunting blade at her and created a wound so deep that the bleeding continued for hours. Rock grabbed a beer and went to sleep before waking up again and deciding he would operate on Giselle's leg. He pressed on her leg so hard that the wound reopened. In another instance, Rock beat one of his pregnant wives in the stomach repeatedly, so severely that she miscarried. It was only after the horrific torture of another member of the Ant Hill Kids, a woman named Gabrielle. She had tried to escape but was unsuccessful. Before her first attempt to flee, Rock forcibly removed eight of her teeth when she complained of a toothache. But in August of 1989, Gabrielle fled again. This time she hitchhiked all the way to a nearby hospital and called the police. Finally, 
After years of brutal torture, a warrant was put out for Rock's arrest. However, he caught wind of this and went on the run. It took the authorities over six weeks to track him down. Rock Terrio pleaded guilty to three counts of aggregated assault and one count of unlawfully causing bodily harm. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison, but don't fret because another cult member led the police to another body on the commune grounds, Solange. After this, Rock pleaded guilty to second degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison. In 2002, Rock tried to apply for parole, but he was rejected as he was too high a risk to reoffend. He never applied again. But wait, there's more. At 63 years old, Rock was found dead in his cell at Dorchester Penitentiary. <sighs> How are we feeling, everybody? I know that was a really rough one to get through. Unfortunately, some people are just so horrible and far gone that there's no way to skirt around their horrid crimes. Let me know what you all thought of this one in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.